Thank you. So this is our Meet the Pro segment, which is very exciting. Meet the Pro. It's kind of self-explanatory, and I think you'll not only meet the pro, but you'll get some tips and different things in there. Our next speaker has 20 years of experience in executive assessment and coaching, leadership development, talent management, facilitation, strategic planning, and team building services. Originally from Argentina, he has extensive experience working with people from different cultures and social backgrounds. He has worked with individuals and organizations in over 40 countries, including the Americas, Europe, Africa, and Asia, offering services in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Please welcome Damien Goldberg. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for inviting me to do this segment. Uh, my goal here is to share with you about my experience, my career, and some tips, particularly for the new speakers. So I hope that this can be helpful to you. Uh, I started my career as a speaker after I graduated from, uh, from school and I got my license as a clinical psychologist in Buenos Aires. And I was too young, I was 21 years old, so I felt I was too young to start working as a clinician. But I, I felt I was old enough to teach psychology. So I got this job as a professor in the university, teaching psychology, group theory and technique, and I had one advantage. The advantage was that I lost my hair. Yes. So people thought that I was 10 years older, but I was pretty young. And two years later, in 1990, my uncle, who was living in Los Angeles, invited me to come to the United States. The economy was really bad. Even though I was a psychologist, both of my parents are psychologists too, and they were not doing well. They are still not doing well. So I think I did a good, make a good decision. I took a leap of faith and I left my family, my friend, my country, my career to start here from zero. Anybody here has done that? Any immigrants from other countries? Okay, so you can relate to that. I didn't speak English. I wrote only $400, that was it. So I, had, I was lucky because I had some help from my family, but I had to go back to study English, went back to the university, um, I was lucky to get a, my first job that helped me to get my, my green card, uh, working with people arrested under the influence of alcohol. And one year later, I got a job very close to here, Santa Monica High School. Oh. And I was working there as a school counselor. Wow. I decided to go back to school to get my credentials in the United States. I went to Calister Northridge. I got my master's in counseling. And then I went back and I got a master's and a PhD in organizational psychology during six years working full-time and going to school full-time. Yeah. So that was a lot, a lot of work and a lot of effort, but it paid off. Uh, during these six years, I was working in the AIDS field. So I worked for AIDS Project Los Angeles. I was running support groups. And then I ran a program for families with children living with HIV and AIDS for Los Angeles Family AIDS Network. And all of this work in the AIDS field really gave me the opportunity to really think about what is important in life. Talking about health issues, when we are dealing with life, life and death, we really start looking at life from a different, with different classes. So that really made a big difference in the way that I was living my life and in the way that I was working. Part of my work was to do some presentations, and I started doing presentations. I became an expert on psychosocial issues for people living with HIV and AIDS. I was invited to local, national, and international conferences. And once, I was invited to a talk show in the talk show radio station number one in Los Angeles, and it went well. A few weeks later, I got a call. Damien, would you like to start a, to host a, a radio program every night for two hours? And I said, what is the topic? Sexuality. They said, are you ready? And I said, OK. And they said, when, when, when are you? And I said, when I am starting? And they say, tonight. <laughs> and I said, OK, OK. So I again took a Leap of faith, went, started the program. Let me share, I was not an expert on sexuality. <laughs> but I became an expert very fast. <laughs> and that worked for a whole year. And then in 2000, I got this opportunity to work for a company called Personal Decisions International. I, I don't know if anybody have heard about PDI, Personal Decisions International. They provide training and coaching and assessment for executives all over the world. I started working for them. They sent me all over the world. I had a chance to work in more than 30 countries doing assessment centers, executive coaching, and leadership training. 
but I got burned out. I was traveling every week. Anybody has seen the movie Up in the Air? Yeah. Oh okay, so that was my life. I was, my, my house was nicer than his, <laughs> but everything else was uh, pretty similar. I was every week on the road, so I went to my boss and I said, I can keep doing this, I need to stay more in LA, and my boss told me, Damien, I'm sorry, we need you, keep uh, traveling. So I said, well, I had to go, let's let, let call me if you need anything. I had a very small contract with a local nonprofit doing strategic planning. So I have this small contract at least to survive for a few months. But I took that risk, I left, and I was lucky enough that they really needed me. So I kept working with them as an average of one week per month. Uh, for a few years, uh, I got the same salary that I was making working for them full time, working just one week wow. per, per month. But I took my risk, and I did good work, and they kept calling me. But that gave me the opportunity to work where my heart was. So not only for big Fortune 100 companies, I was working for Shell, for Hewlett Packard, for Walmart, but I started working in local non-for-profit agencies in Los Angeles. I have been involved with the Center for Nonprofit Management for 12 years now. And by the way, I'm going to be doing a coaching program for them if anybody's interested in getting coaching credentials. Uh, starting next week, so if anybody's interested in getting coaching credentials, let me know. And also, I, my heart, I really wanted to do work for the United Nations. So I started making contacts, and for the last few years, I have been working with a few United Nations agencies. I've been working for the UN Secretariat, for FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, for UNHCR that work with refugees all over the world, doing leadership training for them and executive coaching. And a few years later, I decided that I needed to get my credential as a coach. And this is important because we, we heard before competitive advantage. And I even I had a lot of experience as a coach. I thought I want to have a credential. I went back to school and I was willing to get my white belt and go to coaching training and I got certified by this coaching program, and then I got my certification with International Coach Federation. And I am doing exactly the same with NSA. One of the reasons why I became an NSA member was because I wanted to have the credibility and to get my certification. So I have sent my, pa my papers to be a CSP, Certified Professional uh, Speaker. Um, it will be, uh, I, I had to work for three years to be able to get the, 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 the credential, but for the first two, you can be, there is a name, CSP candidate. Right. So I am waiting next month to hear if I became a CSP candidate. So I want to invite everybody to consider that because I think it's very important for us to have credibility in our profession. The same thing about coaching. I, I really believe in coaching, that I need to have my credential. I went, I got my training, I got involved locally with the local chapter of, of Los Angeles International Coach Federation. And they invited me to be on the board. I was doing what Kevin was doing, inviting guest speakers for a year. They invited me to help in putting together the International Coaching Conference. And when I was doing that conference, I learned how much keynote speakers were doing. <laughs> I didn't know that. These are the things that sometimes we don't know that we don't know. I didn't have a clue about what were the salaries and how much we were paying to our keynote speakers. And I love speaking, so I thought, okay, I want to do this. So what do I need to do? I need to research. So I start researching and saying, okay, what do I need to do? And I learned about NSA, and I became a member of NSA. And the second thing that I did for new speaker is I went to Toastmasters. And again, even though I have been speaking for years and years, I went and I was willing to get my white belt to start from scratch, project number one, comp a, a competent, competent communicator. Who, who is a Toastmasters here? Okay, great. So you know the value of being a, of being a member of participating on learning, and now I am an advanced bronze communicator, working in my advanced silver communicator soon. I'm sharing this with you because these are a couple of things that would help me to be successful, just to be willing to get this white belt and start from scratch if I needed to, to be willing to take risks, and to finish, because I got my sign that I need to wrap up, uh, as a result of the work that I have done for the International Coach Federation, they uh, invited me to be in the board of directors. And I was not sure if to accept or not, because it was a lot of work. Finally, I decided to do it. And last year, they invited me to be the vice president. And this year, they offered me to be the president-elect of the Global Federation. Yeah. 
And again, it was a big risk. For people who are not familiar, International Coach Federation has 21,000 members in 110 countries. Our mission is the global, advance, global advancement of the coaching profession. Uh, and this, again, was a, took a leap of faith about taking that risk. There were other candidates. They chose me. And I will need uh, get luck next year, so wish me good luck, because this is a big job as a volunteer. As we know, these uh, working associations are as volunteers. Last thing to share with you, part of uh, us, for as speakers, we need to come up with books. Came up with my first book last year. It's called Pasos para el Éxito. It's a book in Spanish where I share some of the information I share with you today about how I overcome all of the obstacles to be a successful immigrant to the United States. So the book is in Spanish for immigrants with some personal experiences and some ideas about how to be successful. And next month is coming up my second book that I wrote with my mother. She is also a coach, she's also a psychologist. So we wrote this book on core competencies, coaching core competencies. And we were able to get the, one of the biggest publishers in Latin America to, uh, to publish us uh, the book. And it's going to come out in most Latin American countries. And that is a big uh, opportunity. And I'm very happy to share that with you. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to share. Thank you. Thank you.